John um, at what? DMV Snake, right? <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, awesome. DMV yeah. Snake. We're in his 2008 Dodge Viper, and as you can tell by that one pull, it's ridiculously fast. So, you've had this thing for what, six months, right? Yeah, about seven, eight months now. Yeah, that's crazy. But God, doing, God doing the winter time. God, there's Lance. There, there goes Lance and the Mustang. But yeah, no, um, I met a guy at Cars and Coffee who's like, hey, I know a guy with a Viper um, that he'd probably let you review. And I texted him and immediately found out he was a buddy of mine from high school and I never even knew he had a Viper. So here I am, we're going for a little ride and we're just gonna walk you guys through this absolutely ridiculous car. The Vipers have been known for being pretty much the most raw, visceral supercar in my opinion, you know what I mean? Like, it's can, definitely, definitely a crazy car because they don't got no traction, no stability. It's yeah. like 600 raw horsepower. I mean, break. remember when these things came back out in like what 94, I think it was. Yeah, and it was the the Gen 2s, right? Yeah, and they were absolutely ridiculous. They had the eight. Those those were eight liter V10s, I think. Had, I believe so. They, I think they were 8.3s. Yeah. I know the Gen 3s are the 8.3s as well. Yeah. But they were just they were just ridiculous and like we were saying Doug and Nero died on about like 460 horsepower. But yeah. this thing's what 600, right? Uh, so it Dodge listed it at 600, but like you yeah. said, they usually like underrate these cars. Uh huh. Um, For sure. I've read online that people die on these stock Gen fours and they get to like 610. That's crazy. To, uh, crank. <laughs> 610 to the crank. Yeah. No, that's true. I mean. These things are definitely fast. You said what, zero to 60 in about three and a half seconds or so? I believe so, but this is 3.5, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. They didn't make these with automatics either. You can only get into six nope. speed, right? Always it, Honestly, up. that's the way it needs to be because, I don't know, nowadays only 3% of cars are sold with manuals and it just yeah. makes me sad because both of my cars are stick shift. I'd live to drive stick and I feel like driving the single auto just wouldn't be the same experience it, at all. It would all. not. It would definitely take away that exciting factor of, you know, driving a Viper. Oh, but, yeah, but for anyone sure. Things about Viper, they get that crazy, like, death wish car. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, the whole, the whole, oh, wow. This thing crackles. Yeah. It's not bad. <laughs> it's going to tap the gas. Yeah. But, no, I mean, like, the whole thing about this car is it just lives for the whole statement that you feel the most alive when you're closest to death, you know? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that, I know exactly. And that's kind of what that feels like, you know? It's just extremely, extremely raw. And, I mean, like, you hop in a Ferrari, and, like, a modern Ferrari with, like, the dual clutch transmissions yeah. and whatnot, like, any rich dude that goes to the dealership and drive home in one of those. Exactly. Whereas these things, like... If you don't know what you're doing, you're going to die. <laughs> Matter of fact, when I first got the car, it was, uh, like I said, during winter time. So yeah. the, Oh, you got this in winter? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, days when it wasn't snowing and it was, like, really cold out, I would yeah. take it for a spin. And, uh, yeah, it was not the best experience. Uh, I, kinda, I spun out a couple times. Oh, really? Some terrifying experiences there. But, I mean, you learn from it, honestly. Oh, for sure. But I mean, going back to what you said, it's definitely a car where it's for drivers. It's not for yeah. some guy who wants to, like... Rich guy wants to go drop some money, get a nice stylish car. Uh huh. Because he will not have a good time in this. Yeah, and I mean, what did these things? This gen started at what, like eighty thousand dollars or something like that? Or uh, so not even. When I got the uh, when I got the car, it came with a sticker. Uh, uh huh. And it was at, quoted at hundred and ten. Okay. I believe like the base coupes were a hundred, and these were the hundred and ten. Okay, so, okay. So I think it was like ten thousand dollar difference. I'm not entirely yeah. sure. I just know that the sticker price on this one specifically was a hundred and ten thousand. Yeah. So you, you should tell the viewers how you ended up with this thing in the first place, because that's so, kind of a wild story. So my uh, my uncle he has a dealership in Pensacola, Florida, and I was looking for something sporty, and I I wasn't like I wouldn't call myself a car enthusiast because back then I kind of was. I'm not sure on Mustangs, but I thought Mustangs <laughs> were the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. So I was looking at Mustangs and. Um, and I was like, you know, I should hit up my uncle as a dude from Pensacola, Florida, and, you know, he could probably help me out. And he gives me his uh, website, and he doesn't have that many cars. He has, like, yeah. like 90 Corollas. Oh, like yeah. So I was pretty bummed Nothing out. Nothing you really wanted. <laughs> Nothing at all. So I asked him to give me Mustangs, and he's sporty. He said, I don't have no Mustangs, I don't have no Camaros, I got nothing sporty. I'm like, give anything. He said, I have a Viper. And I'm like, And you're uh, like, oh, shit. He listed for 52000 It was a flood damaged car. Um, and, you know, I've done a lot of things for him, so he... <laughs> Knocked 20 grand off it for me and like get sold it for 32. What? Uh, it came with 18,000 oh miles. God. Uh, the trans had to be built, be rebuilt. It, um, it had to change first gear, second gear, and all the synchros. Uh, and all I had to do was change the window regulator and the Japan, uh, the gyro side, and it's pretty much ready to go. That's awesome. Yeah, so did you drive the thing with the trainee as it was? Was it just totally? I, yeah, I, I tried to drive it, and um, you're gonna wow, this. 
This is gonna be funny, but uh, this is actually the first manual car I've ever owned. Uh, oh, so you learned stick on this? I actually did not. I learned it on uh, my friend Ariana's uh, old uh, Corolla. Okay. And uh, I hopped into this. I st stalled out only four times my That's entire time. That's honestly car. not bad for a stage two clutch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does have a stage two clutch. It's really heavy. Um, I thought it was. I thought it was stock, but. I learned through like meeting other people that it's definitely not stock. Yeah, I mean it probably engages pretty low. I was I was fooling around on the driver's seat. And it's a no, really it, heavy clutch. It, it engages at the very uh, top. Really? Yeah. Huh. The very end. That's that's actually a lot like my car. It's really weird. Even with the brand the new end, clutch, right? it's like right before you let the pedal out it's, completely, it engages. Yeah, so I, I, it's really good for rev matching, though. I'll tell you. Yo, that. I, I, I look, you love it. Like. Yeah. It's nothing, but, um, nothing better than rev matching. <laughs> So yeah, um, now that we've talked a little bit about the powertrain and whatnot, I mean, I think we need to just talk about the style of the Viper. The Viper's just been known for being the most ridiculous looking car on the road. I mean, the front end of this thing is just menacing as all hell. I mean, those, the way those headlights crazy. and that grill just stare you down is insane, and I love the hood vents. I mean, you need them too to cool the V10, because I don't know if you saw this, but when we pulled back after our first drive, I saw like, oh, yeah, you, yeah, saw you that, can like, see like waves. the heat waves. Yeah, it was absolutely ridiculous. Does this thing ever like run really hot or? It is not actually. Um, we got the oil temp right here. And yeah. It's never gone past 210 when I push the car. Yeah, and the temp gauge is only like 185. That's not bad. It actually runs pretty cool. And you say you've been daily driving this thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not like, bad. I mean, it treats me good. I mean, I'm sure it's an absolute riot to daily this thing. I mean, I somewhat daily the Porsche, but of course that's not anything like this car. In terms of a daily driver, but I'm sure you pull a lot of heads. Like I was saying, the way I do the way this thing looks is just great. And the side exit exhaust sound awesome. Though they may have you ever burnt yourself on them? <laughs> one time I went to a parking lot at the mall. Yeah. And I I thought enough room to get out, and I got to in between stage, we're like halfway in, half halfway out, and my legs were glued next to the, the side exhaust, and oh, that was not a good time. Oh, that that doesn't sound fun. <laughs> So what do you, what would you say your favorite part of Viper ownership is, just in general? Honestly, so I thought I would really like the, the like you no know, like the, the head turning factor, the yeah. tension, but that's not like it's old after a week, and sometimes you don't really want the tension. Yeah, no, but I feel you on that. What I really like about it, I just like how extreme it is. Like I uh -huh. always want something so unique and extreme, and until the day I found out my uncle had that car and. Would sell me for 32. Yeah. I never would have thought, never would have thought I'd be getting a bike. Ended up never. Viper, yeah. Like even 20 years from now, I never thought I'd be getting a bike. <laughs> That's absolutely hilarious. So I like, yeah, I like the extreme factor. I like how like it's almost like a badass's car. Like it's like yeah, no traction, I mean, no stability, and a ton of horsepower. That's the thing. The people that hate on these cars only hate on it because they can't drive them. You know, like know that's the thing. Yeah. Because these things, it's not that they're. It's a lot of people say that they're just not good driving cars. That's not the thing. It's just a very raw car. Exactly. You know? And and I understand what people, what people don't want the car are coming from because when I yeah. first got the car, I was pretty um. I gotta say, it's pretty shocked. I was like, how this car drives. And so you had it shipped up, I assume. Or yeah, I had I had a um, I had it towed up here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. The car. Um, it, it's a it was a burgundy color underneath. Yeah. I got it wrapped. Uh, yeah, the purple wrap looks awesome. Satin, yeah, satin purple. Absolutely awesome. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to go something unique. No one ever saw that coming, the purple. Yeah. My dad thought it'd be black. I got a purple. Oh, so you didn't tell him what it was going to be. No, he, he was so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, everyone was pretty much shocked. And I don't know, I just... I see, like, the new Vipers, the new Gen 5s, they come with a darker purple. Yeah. These pops. Yeah, the pops are awesome. Um... And I was like, damn, that purple looks so nice. But I want something lighter. I want something uh -huh. a little lighter. Because this is more like a matte color, you know? Yeah, and I, I like that no reflection, like matte. Yep. But at the same time, like, I look at satin and I thought, you know, it's best of both worlds. What is the top speed on the convertible ones? 202. Yeah. So it's yeah. the same as the hard tops then. Yeah. I mean, I've never hit the top speed because, you know, listen, uh, reckless driving is not as cool. <laughs> <laughs> True that. If you're on a track, Go for it. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. But I have, uh, I've raced 
uh, like I told you, a stock uh, Hellcat Challenger. Yeah. Which do they only come in autos? As far as so my you can knowledge. get you can get the Challengers with the sticks, but the Chargers with autos only. Yes. The, okay. As far as I know, the Chargers only come in autos. But okay. um, I beat the Charger uh, mm -hmm. Hellcat, which I was pretty shocked at. Yeah. But I guess I do have that. I do have the advantage with Arrow, and I weigh much less. Oh than that. yeah, a lot. Those things are what forty five hundred pounds or more. Forty three, forty four. They're yeah. fat. <laughs> and, and I guess what does this thing weigh? Like 32? 34. 34? 34, 40. That's, that's 34, honestly not 40. bad because the engine not probably weighs the majority of that. The engine's <laughs> massive. This yeah. car, like, if you, you have long arms, you can probably reach down and touch the rear tires. We're all the way in the rear. Oh, uh, yep, I can. <laughs> We're all the way in the rear. Yep. Um, and I, someone pointed this out to me. I'm not sure this is true, but, well, I mean, the car, the engine sits behind the axle. So someone said it, this car technically is. Engine. So it's a front mid engine car. Exactly. Yeah. So the front mid engine car. So, so the weight distribution is probably pretty good on it. Exactly, because we were sitting in the rear. Uh -huh. We got the. Um, yeah, we have our fat asses weighing down the <laughs> rear end. <laughs> <laughs> so I think now we need to talk about the comfort because we all know the bike was the epitome of comfort and daily drivability. So awesome. honestly, the interior is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's not at all. Honestly, I'll be really like, honest. Like, like, and I. I came from driving like a 20 year old like Mercedes like yeah. CLK and that thing was like leather interior you know like that was the only thing I care about the car because yep. these cars aren't fast okay they did a little bit of style but it's really outdated so I really uh -huh. care about the interior and like if it rains or something like and it's like I'm gonna put the windows I obfuscate with this car yeah I'll crack the windows a little bit of drip on the side panel right here I won't yep. really care it's plastic yeah Not I mean big. I was actually pretty surprised that the dash is soft touch like yeah that's kind of cool oh. and I, I like the rivets in the dashboard and it's just a really purpose-built interior and the bucket seats the bolstering is really they good on them. You, man. they hug you well they're actually they pretty damn you. comfortable and I have headroom I'm not sure if I'd have headroom in the hard top it's but on the convertible I actually have headroom in I six foot two well you're you are almost cutting a little uh close yeah there are some people that do buy, that do buy the Vipers and the first thing they go for is getting a lowering kit for the seats yeah uh, the, the biggest thing I noticed is just how loud it is in here. I mean, that's kind of self-explanatory because it's a bike. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Yeah, I mean, it is a Viper, so of course it's going to be loud as hell. But, I mean, just driving the thing and sitting in the interior, it's just it just makes the experience, you know? Really I feel like if this car is quiet and, like, restrained and had traction control and all that stuff, it just wouldn't be the same. And... So that's crazy. When I got this car, I've never seen a Viper in person. Yeah. I was. I've been everywhere. I've never seen a Viper in person. Uh -huh. So when I when I start driving, I was like, this car definitely has an exhaust on it or something. It's probably it's stock. stock. Yeah. Something that uh really interesting. The mufflers in this car on both sides, they are 32 inches long and really? I believe four inch diameter. Wow. <laughs> so that, that's it is pretty restrained. That's their attempt at trying to quiet this thing. Jeez, <laughs> that's ridiculous. But yeah. I mean, they do have less room than having the exhaust come to the back because yeah. of the sides. Yeah, so. they do come out the sides and brand you. So, <laughs> but yeah, back on topic to the Viper. What would you say, like, your least favorite part of the car is? What do you not like about it? So, bring your hands in real quick. Yeah. Not rolling up the windows. Yeah, give it five minutes. It's going to be like a sauna. Oh yeah, I noticed that. Does the AC work or? It does. I just. It doesn't work I just well. don't like. No, it works well. I just, like. I just don't like using it. <laughs> Fair. Don't want to rob all that power. Exactly. <laughs> um, and like, when you and I've been, like I said, I've been daily, daily driving this thing, and Virginia weather is really off. Yeah. Winter time, when I first got this car, it'd be 20 degrees outside. I'd have the windows down, and I'd be fine. Yeah. I'd be fine. Because this summer, thing just heats up. And in summer, like it's already getting kind of hot in here. Yeah. But, no, it's, it's you can feel it coming in from the footwells. Oh yeah, the footwells are worse. Yeah. <laughs> You can definitely feel it. Well, that's the worst part too. I couldn't do that U-turn. I don't. Oh, the, the turning, turning circle's radius probably so not ideal. Bad. You know what's hilariously bad for a turning radius? My Ford Focus. It's really? actually appalling. It's really bad. And I think it's because of the 18-inch rims in the sport suspension. Ah. Doesn't you can't get as much steering lock in the real wheel well without fouling yeah, on it's, something. It's definitely the sports suspension. Yeah, no, for sure. Mm. Yeah. We'll do a quick Oh yeah, I think we little, need to do a little dump the clutch. A little bit of little, speedy little driving. Out, yeah. Uh oh, I'm ready. <laughs> oh yeah. hell yeah! That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Shit, that's already 80. Might have got close to 100 little. Yeah, that's funny. I've been completely unaware of how fast we've been going this whole time because I 
can't see the speedo from over here. So my father, he's not really a car person. Yeah. He's the type of guy. <laughs> Mercedes is the best. Like. <laughs> and I was like, no, dude. BMW, hey, you guys BMW, have like, Volvo. Four of them? Volvo's so much better than Mercedes. Um, yeah. So when I get my ride in this, he didn't think it was any, anything crazy. He's like, oh, AMG's the best. Yeah. So he didn't really know it. He, he was in four wheel car. Thought it was some Dodge. Yeah, that's crazy. How could he not know about what the Viper is all about? Oh, so this thing came into the driveway, and he's like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> yeah, it, they pulled up in the trailer. Uh, my mom was the first one who saw it. And she's like, "What the f did you just buy?" Yeah. <laughs> but going on the payments, so I'm paying like four hundred seventy dollars a month for insurance. Yeah, and about three hundred sixty-five dollars for the car payments. Yeah. Yeah, not, honestly, for a Viper, that's really not that bad. Not that bad at all. I, the insurance is definitely where it gets you, though, just because of, you know. Yeah, the insurance not good either. The liability of driving a car like this and all that. Good. Geico, I'm trying to switch out of Geico, though. Who's you, who do you have now? Geico, I'm trying to switch out. Oh, you're trying to switch out of Geico. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. But, dude, I can't get over that exhaust. That's awesome. Now, imagine if I did a muffler delete. Oh, you think so? Yeah. I mean, I, I want everyone to say just to do a full system, but the full system with headers in this car. Yeah. The, I don't know if I'm pronouncing the Belanger. Belanger system uh -huh. is the best. Uh, those are the, I don't know, four grand. Like, wow. Yeah, there's so much stuff I plan for this car, but it's like paying for the insurance, paying for the, the payment for the car. Yeah. The gas, oh my god, dealing this car is not Yeah, you probably get what, eight miles to the gallon or something? Yeah, I, I think JR Garage, they did, uh, they tested out. They get about eight. Yeah. And when they push the car, it's like two. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, like That's bad. Good. So these are what? Michelin Pilot Sport? Uh, uh, Super Sports. Okay, yeah. Not the S's. Um, 345's in the rear. The fronts. Yeah, the rear tires on this thing, guys, are ridiculous. Uh, They're super wide. <laughs> the fronts. 275? How the f*** do I not know my front sizes? Like he has a he has a guy with a AMG um, CLA, CLA 45. 45 with a tune on it and what's that guy with the Mustang? What's that? What sort of power is he making? He's I'm not sure exactly what power he's making. I just know that V6 is definitely faster than an S550 GT stock. Yeah, but yeah, I think we're gonna tune out, guys. Thanks for watching, Motorminds. Definitely subscribe if you like the content. Find us on social media. We'll be back with another video. Yeah.